Well, hello, remember this video? This is me forging two small knives out of feather Damascus by hand a few years ago. I'll link to that video below because it's got some awesome step-by-step -step pattern illustrations on the screen as you go. So here are the basics of how the pattern works. We take alternating layers of 15 and 20 and something like 1084, weld them together, then turn the block on end and press in the corners. Then we square it up again and flatten it on what was its original Y axis. Our straight and parallel lines are now curved or bowed outwards at the edge of the billet, stacking the two on top of each other's reveals a W pattern. These are known as crushed W's and what most people start with to form feather. Now the build is cut in six sections and stacked up and welded together. It's flattened again, then cut up and stacked on itself again. I didn't draw out the third cut up and restack, but I am doing this three times. So six times six times six, 216 layers. That's a lot for feather, but it's gonna look really nice. It's, I like it. So next the build is divided in two with a splitting tool going straight down the middle, which curves our horizontal pattern lines downward and gives us that feather effect. The two halves are cleaned up and forge welded together exactly as they were split apart. Then the build is going to be drawn out and through a combination of forging and grinding, uh, we're going to shape a knife out of that. Usually there's more grinding than forging here so as not to disrupt the pattern too much. Awesome! Let's hear from our sponsor before we go any farther. Want a chance to win this custom Diberti Ford Bronco? Omaze gave $27 million to charity in 2021 and it looks like 2022 is off to a great start. Check out your chance to get your hands on a custom DeBerti Ford Bronco with taxes and shipping paid. This vehicle is worth $140,000. Omaze is using the sweepstakes to raise funds for the Warrior Build Foundation, supporting veterans through teaching mechanics and vehicle modification. So you can feel good about your participation. Go to www.omaze.com slash Green Beetle now to enter for your chance to win this amazing vehicle while supporting the Warrior Build Foundation. You can do it right here. This off-roading Ford Bronco Wildtrak is wizard on its own, but when you add in $80,000 worth of custom upgrades by TV's twin turbo duo Doug and Brad DeBerti, it just can't be passed up. So you guys take a look, see what Omaze is about, go to omaze.com slash Green Beetle and check out your chance to win this awesome vehicle and support a really great cause. So our steel is cleaned up to remove pickling and paint. We're gonna cut it up, stack it in alternating layers, and then tack weld it together. Our 1084 has a blue machinist die along the side, and the 1520 is just plain. After some tack welding, it's gonna be into the forge for some heating, then flexing, then squishing. Now remember, before we fully flatten this on its y-axis, we do have to make our W's, and we set that up by squishing in the corners. And now we flatten it. Well, if you're like me, all you can think about is sweaty Patrick Nimsey. But you're not like me, you're better than me. You're a Kardashian man. You named the fish in your aquarium after OJ's defense team, but Johnny Cochran ate little Bobby Shapiro after season seven of the Kardashians when Kim divorced Chris and then had a baby with Kanye, whom they named after a direction. The baby's name is a direction. And when Tristan cheated on Chloe, well, a thing's got real. The whole tank went belly up and you decided to buy some chinchillas that you then euthanized when the K-Crew quit the show for good after 20 seasons. Why can't you be a McDreamer like me? Those fish would still be alive. So here we are, we're going to cut up the billet, the two halves, into six total pieces and we'll do our first six layer stack. We're going to repeat that process with another six layer stack.
And one more time for 216 layers total. This time we're not going to squish it completely flat because we have to divide it. What you see here is that I've re-welded the handle to the bottom of my billet and I'm using it to square it up a bit better before moving on. The plan is to forge weld this mild steel to the outside of our billet to help prevent splitting of ends in the sides as we divide the billet first and then re-weld it and draw it out, which can be quite stressful and pull things apart. So it also provide an oxygen-free environment I'll use to forge weld the billet together with a few light presses one more time before we split it. But first I have to get these sides welded on, then I have to reattach the handle to come in from the long side. Then we'll press it tight a little bit more, make sure all the welds are good, and then time to divide it. I've made a makeshift splitting die that just isn't going to hold up that well, and it keeps coming off the press, and I'm going to have to sort this out eventually. So I have to weld these pieces back together, but I can't decide if I want to forge them flat, then grind the surfaces clean before welding them together, or do I just want to grind them clean without any forging? I don't want to mess up the pattern. I decided to forge them flat, then clean them up, then forge weld them together. We'll see what happens. One of the issues I'm going to have, since this is much thicker than it is wider, is that as I squish it down this way, the sides, like for example right here and right here, they're going to flip up. They're going to flip up to this and they're going to be visible along the visible plane, what I want visible. And this, this doesn't look like this. It's very different. So I need to be careful with that. It, it would be, might be better that I cut this in half and make two smaller knives because that won't happen as much. I won't have to do as much drawing and not as much of that'll happen. I don't know. What I'm gonna do is um, try to weld this a little tighter up here and then flatten this out, clean up the sides and see what the pattern looks like. And then I'll decide from there whether or not I need to make two smaller knives or one big knife. I'm not going to pretend that's not devastating. That's a pretty bad deal. You know, what was going to be, I have a lot of thickness left here. This is going to be a nice eight inch something and now it's definitely not. Um, this was the final vertical weld where I had the six pieces stacked and welded them this way. <clears throat> this is one of those pieces and it, it opened there and there, which is just, I don't understand it. But So I could try to sort of forge this down over here and make a tang and then you know, work underneath this stuff. And but I don't trust that either of these, you know, there's, I think there's a good possibility these are gonna extend a little more. So I don't know that I would really wanna risk that. I don't know. Or I could come in here and do this number. And then just use this for fittings. You know, this area I can make some fittings for a knife as I make the blade out of that. 
we're going to salvage a cool knife out of this, so don't worry. And I'm going to show you an effort at a second knife, so stay tuned. After sanding to a thousand grit, it's into three to one water to ferric chloride about four times each for seven minutes at a time with cleanup in between those baths with 3000 grit sandpaper. You know what, it's a great looking knife, but I think we can do better. Let's try again. Yeah, remember how I was supposed to fix my splitting die? Well, I didn't. So it divided this sort of lopsided, and I tack welded it together anyway, and I was going to forge weld it together, and then I just took it apart and decided just to forge the top half because I thought I could get a pretty cool knife out of that still. So let's take a look at what happens. I think it's still a really, really nice knife. It's not what I intended, but I certainly do like it. I think it's a very cool knife. Which one of these do you guys like better? I'm going to try this again, and we'll get it right. Have a good one.